Hello and welcome back to Warhammer Conquest, issue number 11. Oh man, have I been waiting for this. Yeah, I got the copy before, but I've been saving the opening. I tell you what, aggressors, you get them for 25 quid a box, 7 99 All right, yeah, I did go in, I did get more than one issue. But let's be calm and let's take a look. I'll get this open. All right, so we've got our sprue. Take a close look. And what we can see here, these are the push fit models. You don't need glue for these. Now, the magazines I really do prefer, is either vehicle magazines or the ones where you get multiple models. And you get three aggressors. The amount of firepower these guys have in a normal 40K game is phenomenal. So to see them in a magazine and you're getting them right away, this will help you balance out uh, the amount of pox walkers that you already have or the amount of death guard versus the ultramarines if you're playing them that way. And if you're sticking to the magazine rules, again, it helps that balance. Uh, you'll see exactly how devastating these are once you start getting into play. So let's take a closer look. As always, we have our contents. Uh, we have our beautiful artwork. A little bit of information there. And they're talking about Gravis armor. Now, for those that are fairly new to uh, Warhammer Conquest or Warhammer in general, 40k, there are different variants of armor. Kind of like Iron Man has different types of armor. It's like his Mark II, his Mark III armors. It's the same kind of principle. They have different effects, different abilities, and they can be quite specialized piece of equipment. And it's quite amazing. Uh, we see the breakdown there. Uh, the effects. I've actually got the bolter version here. Uh, rather than the um, flamethrower. So there is an alternate version, but that's not the one that you get. You get the flamer version. Uh, trust me, I've got some of these already, and they're amazing. Um, you've got more talk about the uh, ultramarines and the location that they sit in space. Um, well, you know, I'm more into Blood Angels, as you've seen. <laughs> they're talking about the plagues where it's moved through the system and if you're looking into Nurgle information and you've probably been online looked up the law for Nurgle and background you see that his uh, power is carried through plagues it's not about killing it's about multiplying and obviously bacteria and viruses carry out a lot more life than you know a, a single person we see the salamanders here and these guys specialize in things to do with fire flame uh, their prime mark is Vulcan but um, you'll, you'll get more into that as you read up, and this is really good. Um, I would like them to have more lore, or it would be cheeky. Uh, give me give me three, four kind of chapters in one hit. I, I want to read up on those, so now I can choose how I want, because it's still early when it comes to uh, painting up your models. You could get away with repainting. I mean, they could have started off with Death Watch, and then that way you could pretty much get away with any chapter that you want. Anyway, moving on, uh, we've got contact with orcs here. Perfect timing because it is October. Uh, you might have seen one or two of my videos on here kind of pointing out the new equipment for that. If you're into your Xenos, your aliens, the build system for the aggressors, you don't need glue. Um, so, you know, that's fine. Ooh, they've got more pages for, for, for the builds. Um, but that's because each model is fairly unique. So they're going to have instructions for all of them. There you go. So we lost two pages there. The aggressors, we've got our paints and with our washes. I know I haven't done um, the, the issues 9 and 7. If you do want me to go over them, I mean, I might just put them up anyway. I can do like a little review of them. But as the time's passed, I don't know if you'll be that interested. But if you can let me know in the comments below... I'll be well grateful. Yeah. Uh, we've got our painting techniques. Uh, they're starting off with the blue again. As I said, you would have selected your chapter by now and you would have more than enough paint and you'll be able to do this. Uh, one little thing I do with mine is always paint the, the backpack silver, the power packs, so they could be universal. <laughs> right, um, these, these flame fryers are just awesome and I just want you guys to just give that a go and have some fun. Right, Fire and Fury, we're looking at the breakdown. You, as you know, I'm, I've am i seen this map enough now. They've even got another side to it that they never flip over and show you. Um, but you can go out and about and buy yourself uh, game mats. 
so that's no issue. You, you could use a table, you could just put down seller tape and mark out a frame. You know, whatever you want to use, it's up to you. There are some people out there um, which have got like plasma screen TVs, the old school TVs or, you know, LEDs and they, or LCDs, sorry. And they put their maps up and they play on top of the TV as they lay it flat like a table. And that's pretty cool. So, our usual tactics there. You've got rules update. So, you've got your, my favorite little cards. Definitely cutting some of these out if I get more than one magazine. I like the little part that says, uh, you know, read this beforehand so they can focus. But look at that 2d6 shooting attacks, flamestorm gauntlets. Yeah, sometimes you can get two, other times you can get 12. You should average out about seven. Flamers, automatic hits. This is your friend, people. Automatic hits. Um, always remember that, even when you move into 40k. Um, like the full games and kill team. Overwatch, auto hits again. Enough said. It's all about those wounds. Quite easy. Right. They've got a little scenario here. Which is always good. Now, if you've got more than one magazine, you could always just double the amount of models you've got. Or you could always run the scenario, but you can add in additional models as it feels balanced. They haven't spoken about the points yet. They haven't spoken about power levels yet. And if you are moving forward in 40k, you would have bought um, your 40k book and seen it would cost quite a lot to get yourself a little army. Uh, or build up to be a points army. But I suggest that you speak to people about a slow grow campaign. And what that means is effectively, as you go through the campaigns, you go out and buy one or two more models to fulfill the points quota. You don't add on hundreds of points, you just add on maybe you know, 100 or two, or maybe 150 points, and you can place in a unit on your team. So that allows you time to paint, to build, to reflect on the rules, and to get used to playing them. Okay. Uh, extra rules, and this is all about the uh, Death Guard. We've got extra damage from plasma guns, we've got a blind launcher, and we've got a multi melter. And they're focusing on the um, take the highest damage there. And this will be good as a little card itself. That's really nice. Um, I'm quite pleased with what I've seen here today. Um, you've got our Death Guard character next. Um, Okay, here's what it is. And you've got your terrain. Now, look at that. We've got our container that we actually already made. So is this model or this magazine worth it? Because we've already created these. And you can get these in sets um, and your kill team box sets. Hmm. All right, okay. Well, that's something to consider when making that decision. Um, because for a couple more quid, I'm sure you can get a starter set which will give you five models. Um, yeah, it'd be £15 and get a kill team starter set that will give you your terrain and extra models. Hmm. Okay, so let's actually have a look at the models and go from there. Okay, so these are my uh, Blood Angel Aggressors. Uh, as you can see, I had a lot of fun with those. Variation on colours. Uh, the ground, I'll have to make them a bit better bases. The temptation for lava bases is way too high with these. Maybe I'll do a flamethrower effect. Maybe something from my next narrative base. Uh, <laughs> but I'm really enjoying these magazines. I know it's a bit slow uh, for veterans which are out there buying you know, their, their individual bits as they know what they want. But with this magazine process, it gives you time to know what you're really after. Um, you know, and just build slowly and have an idea of what you want to go for. You know, it's not too overwhelming. Uh, what I really enjoy about these is having that time where I get a magazine once a week and get to spend a little bit of time, make a cup of tea, reading through the magazine, a little bit of history, having a look at the models, thinking about how I want to paint them, and just spend that time. It's really nice little kind of quiet time. It's not overwhelming with a lot of grey models, because it can happen. Uh, for those of you that end up buying a couple of boxes and you're like, oh my goodness, all this grey to paint. Um, but it helps to keep that under control. It's a nice little fix. <laughs> but anyway I want to say thank you very much and congratulations again uh, to mention 1984 for winning the narrative base competition with a lovely base which is he used the sprues so keep the sprues from this model and see what he's done in my other video it looks amazing like an interior of a ship so like comment share and subscribe 
And I want to say thank you very much again for the time. I'll see you again soon. This has been Spect. PC out. Before you go, don't forget to pop over to the Wargamers Unification Group. You should find it online. If not, search Idic Beer on YouTube. You should see it there. There are plenty of members there to support your wargaming needs. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and catch you all soon. Playtime.